Okay, I apologise for the noise of the oven, but I'm cooking an apple crumble. Um, I used three of these lovely Granny Smith apples. And um, the peelings and the cores have all gone in there because it all contains pectin and it's all good stuff. Uh, I've got an additional Granny Smith apple which I'm going to add to it in its entirety. But first of all, I've got to cut it up. Um, the water in there has a squeeze of lemon juice in it just to stop everything from going brown. So I'll just get my cores into there. And that's about all right for the liquid level as well. So I'm going to transfer all this now to a saucepan and get that on the boil as it is. Okay, that's it transferred to a saucepan. I'm now going to get that on the heat, bring it to a boil and simmer it for about 10, 15 minutes. So there we have my apples boiling away, my apple cores, skins and apple. And I'm just going to drop in a couple of cloves to add a little bit of extra flavour into that. And a little bit of cinnamon. I'm going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. That can go in there. And because it's a sage jelly I'm making, at this stage I'm going to add in some dried sage. So I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of dried sage at this stage. And then I'll stir all that in. Oh, the smell of that, boys and girls, is absolutely wonderful. And I'm just going to let that now cook away for about 15 to 20 minutes on a, a fairly fast rolling simmer. All oh, right, while that's all doing, I'll show you my setup for my jelly bag. And it's a fairly simple setup I've got with this. Um, it's a like a framework onto which your jelly bag sits and it just drips over a standard bowl so uh, it's important not to once we decide to strain all this uh, is not to squeeze it because we don't want all we want in there is the liquid the juice and the pectin which comes out the skin and out the cores and out the apple itself and that's what we want in that bowl so we don't squeeze all we do is once we've once we've mashed that in the pot, um, we then put it through the jelly bag and just allow gravity to do the work, and we allow that to happen for quite a while, ideally uh, overnight. But certainly, if you do it in the morning, it will be ready in the early evening for you. So we're just now waiting for the apples. One additional uh, way you can do it is simply by having a clean tea towel, which you then sit inside a sieve like that and then you just or muslin cloth or something like that you sit it inside a sieve and then that sits over a bowl and catches it all the same the advantage of that is is that you can cover it over while it's dripping through okay lifting the lid after about 10 minutes everything's starting to go nice and soft so I'm going to give it a bit of the good news with the masher just to help everything break up a little bit and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll just leave that mashed in there to cook uh, for a little bit longer about another uh, five to ten minutes all right you can see that's mashed and boiled down rather well so now I'm just going to transfer that let that cool off a little bit and then transfer it to my uh, jelly bag. All right, it's cooled off a little bit. I'm just going to now ladle it through and drop it straight into my jelly bag. The jelly bag I've scalded along with everything else to make sure that it's clean and safe. And I just leave the apple in there. Don't squeeze it. And just let gravity do its thing. 
So now you see the process has slowed to a drip. And uh, what we do now is just allow that to happen, allow gravity to do its work. And we want to leave that, you can leave it overnight, you can leave it for a minimum of about eight hours and just let it all drip through into the bottom. If you're concerned about um, flies or anything getting to it, what you need to do is cover it all with uh, clean tea towels. Okay, so on top of that, I've laid a lid that's wider than the actual bag itself. And then over that, I'm just going to lay some tea towels strategically to cover the pot from all angles. And then we set that aside and let gravity do its thing. Well, all right, the next morning, um, our old friend gravity has done its work and we now have a measure of apple juice in the bottom of that, that and this bag uh, can now be emptied into the compost or into the food waste and then the bag washed for its next cycle. I'll need a measuring jug, I'll need some white sugar, I prefer to use cane sugar so I'm using this particular brand because I know that's cane sugar and over here I've got a pot coming up to heat with my thermometer in it and I'm just going to bring all that up to sterilizing heat it's got my jars it's got my yeah, my funnel for filling the jars and it's got the jar lids in it and it's got my thermometer which I also want to be sterilized because it's going into the product I've also got a pan which I think will um, be more than enough to take the juice we have and the sugar we're going to put in it. So the next process is to get all this cleared up and get the juice into the jar to measure it. Okay my um, sterilizing pot uh, is come up to it's over 84 degrees celsius which is the uh, sterilizing temperature and that's around about 180, call it 185 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've taken the measure of my juice and it is at 350 mils. It's very easy to measure in mils rather than pints because uh, that means I want 350 mils, means I want 350 grams. So it's really simple if you do it in the metric measurement. And uh, so that's what I'll do now. I'll just, I'll just weigh out some sugar. There we go, 350 grams of sugar. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put that all in the pot uh, along with my juice and bring it to the boil. Okay, in the pot with the sugar and in with the apple juice. And you'll need a wooden spoon for this. So I like to get in there with a the wooden spoon and give it a stir as it's coming up to heat to make sure that the sugar dissolves completely. Otherwise it forms a thick toffee mass at the bottom of the pot and we don't want that. So just as it's coming up to heat, make sure you give it a regular stir to dissolve the sugar. The one thing that always amazes me about making apple jelly is how from the the pulp and the core and the peel of the apple you get this beautiful golden colour it never fails to amaze me so we now boil that until it reaches jelly temperature jamming temperature and I'll show you how to do that if you haven't got a thermometer there is a way you can check and it really is quite simple and in order to do that, you need to get a white plate and put it in the freezer. <clears throat> so you need a plate with enough white on it and we'll, I'll wrap that in um, cling wrap and put it in the freezer so that we can bring it out, unwrap it and put it straight to, to work. Okay, so as it comes to the boil, you'll need to turn the heat down and keep it stirring. Don't let it boil over, otherwise you'll have an unholy mess. 
and as you see you will start to see this white foam appear on the top but we, we, we want to be lifting that off fairly soon but you'll see that the liquid itself starts to clear rather quickly to this lovely golden colour so I'm just going to let that get to a rolling boil like that a fairly steady boil and allow the white foam to collect around the edges because I want to skim that off I want to get rid of it it's not going to kill anybody but it's uh, not desirable in the finished jelly the other thing you'll need of course is some more dried sage and for this amount we'll need about a heap teaspoonful but you can just eyeball that all right, I'm going to do my skimming operation now. Get off as much of that as I can. It's not an exact science. Just get as much of it off as you can. Because we want to end up with that beautiful, beautiful golden liquid we see there. There's a lot of products on the market with fancy colours in them, but my two favourite colours, I think, in the culinary world is this gorgeous colour of golden colour of apples, They're like molten gold. It's absolutely gorgeous. I really do love it. And of course, the colour of saffron, real saffron. So into that, and while it's boiling, I'm going to put in a heaping teaspoon of my sage and stir that in. And then I'll see where I am with that because I may choose to add a little more, bearing in mind that there's already sage boiled into that apple in the juice extraction process so there is already sage flavoring in there but this will also look good in suspension in the jelly so i'll let that boil for a bit because that sage it is still a little parched and it will absorb some of the moisture from the apple juice and then it will sit better in suspension right the next thing I want to do is I want to get in my thermometer and it's got a nice clip on the back of this one as it's really handy so it can sit up actually in in the liquid and then I can sit and watch that and then we boil that now and then it comes up, there's a line there just where my finger is, to about 104 degrees Celsius, which is the jamming temperature, which is about, around about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need it to get to that temperature. And then uh, I will show you the, uh, the alternate technique for um, testing that if you don't have a jam thermometer. So I'm going to let that cook for a little longer and then we'll have a look. Of course you normally make this in larger batches of course from harvested apples but um, this is more to demonstrate the technique and because I don't like throwing anything away and I had the cores and pulp from uh, four apples to use up. I've adjusted the thermometer so you can see it as it rises up to jam temperature. As you can see it's starting to creep up the thermometer scale and it's getting a bit more active and it's bubbling up. You can regulate that by turning your heat down a little and just let it come naturally to jamming temperature. Okay it just peaked at jam temperature I'm just going to test it now. So what I do is I take my plate and a spoon and I take a measure of it 
and then run it down the plate, the cold plate. And then we see if a skin begins to form. Just let that cool a second or two. I don't know if you can see that particularly well. But you push it and we see if it gels, if a skin begins to form. Right now, it's not quite there. It bunches, but it doesn't form a skin quite yet. So it's just at the syrup stage right now. <clears throat> okay, it's almost boiling over. You, I should have used a bigger pot, but there we go. I wasn't expecting it to boil up so much. I'm going to try a little bit more of that now because it's at the jamming temperature right now. Yeah, and it's starting to form. As it drips off the spoon, I can see it's starting to form a kind of a, a skin, a gel. So you can see now that that's at the gelling stage and we can turn off the heat. And all I have to do now is wait until it's at Around just above 80 degrees Celsius there at the sterilize. So around about 180 degrees Fahrenheit 84 degrees Celsius When it's round about that temperature we can start to put it in bottles without the fear of them cracking Okay, so the golden rules of canning bottling are that everything must be clean and sterilized and you'll always always estimate more jars than you'll actually need because I don't think I'll need these three so I'm just gonna I can tip this straight out of the sauce the saucepan into the into the jar and I'm using my trusty canning funnel and I think I'll only use this one now and just about okay now if you do this while it's still hot like I said you get the lids on and I'm reusing jars there's no reason why you can't as long as the lids are good right and then I'm going to put those on real tight with the use of my trusty, get him out of the way, with the use of my trusty tea towel because that is going to be hot. And then I put that on fairly tight. And then what I want to do is stand it on the lid and then leave it like that for a few minutes before turning it back the right way up. And I'll do the same with this one. So it looks like I've got a jar and two thirds of it. So that's on tight. Now on the top of these lids, you've got a dimple. And what we want to do is as that cools, it creates a partial vacuum inside the jar. And then it will seal itself. If it doesn't seal itself, you can't keep it as long. You just can't trust it uh, sealed one possibly two years it's up to you unsealed you want to keep it no more than a couple of weeks or if uh, if you see anything dodgy forming on it but uh, we'll leave that on its lid for about five minutes and then invert it and that does two things it helps to, to make the seal really well and the other thing it does of course is it makes sure that the the sage is in suspension in the jelly a little bit better so I'll flip those over in about five minutes all right it's time to give them the flip oops it is still very hot and then we'll wait to see if the dimple pops in and then I'll get back to you okay the dimple has gone in as predicted and the sage looks like it's in nice suspension inside the jelly and that is now ready for storing but first of all i like to put a label on it 
Hey friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you would like to follow my channel, please subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications for all my future videos. It would be great to hear from you in the comments and I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. You may wish to check out these titles or even help me out with a donation using the links in the description below the video. Thanks for watching.